peoples. Yesterday, with the new bannings of winter's well, I was a bit of a summer mood. And it's I'm pretty pretty livid, pretty upset by it. I consider all of them all but dead. But today, because there is an Oldham build out there that is not affected by the bans that can survive the ban list. Let's get into what this new deck is and how to play it. It's still around, baby. Let's go. This is Oldham, and uh, before we get to the juicy parts of this deck, I want to say, first and foremost, this is a fatigue deck. <laughs> this deck is looking to exhaust your opponent's uh, cards and uh, basically make it where they only have blue cards left in their deck or even no cards left in their deck. Uh, now, when you're playing a fatigue deck, your biggest opponent is time, and I'll get into how we can avoid that. Uh, a lot of players do not like going against a fatigue deck, so... Uh, we'll get into what we can do to help mitigate um, a negative experience and, and try to bring out a positive one. Uh, just so you can have fun playing this deck and you can have a good time with your opponent. So I just revealed Titan's Fist because we don't have um, Wins as well anymore. And then we are running the Rampire of the Rant's Head, no Stalagmite. Uh, of course we got the Crown of Seeds that I just shown there. Uh, that is our best equipment for this style build. Because again, this is a fatigue build. Uh, Fiendless Spring Tunic is nice as well. Can help to bring about a free um, uh, Crown of Seas turn. Crater Fist is just a good guardian uh, block. There's gold foil now. And then we are running the Iron Hide Legs. Uh, Olden was kind of getting interesting. A lot of people are doing back to Mage Master Boots and even Snapdragons uh, Scalers. But now we're back to the old defense route. So Iron Hot Legs is the way to do it. Our AB package contains Arcane Lantern, No Rune Boots, and No Rune Gloves. So AB3 plus a crown, so almost AB4 there, basically. Um, and that's our equipment. Okay, so let's get into what the meat and bones of this deck has. And we're gonna start with my favorite card in Flesh and Blood, and that's Heart of Fiendal. So Heart of Fiendal, just a great card to have because we are going to have some life gain in this deck so that we can stay at a good life total and we're not dying. Um, and this is just a perfect card for that. So Heart of Fiendal. Now going on to Sunkiss. We've seen this card get used before in like a Cleric Dash type build. Uh, we are running Sunkiss. I think we're just running a one of. And that is okay, honestly. We'll get into the other uh, counterpart of Sunkiss. We are not running the Moonwish combo though. Uh, Sigil of Solace, this is a card used by multiple heroes. Uh, even Bra uh, Bravo uses this card. So it's just a solid good 0 for 3. And here's the other card, Healing Bomb. Another 0 for 3 life. That's kind of what we want out of our, our, all of our healing cards. Um, you can run Healing Bomb. You can run Sunkiss. I split it up just in case for anything that could happen. Just to have two different cards that do the same thing. Uh, so healing bomb and then finally we have blessing of patience, which is a new card that we've got from uh, What was that card? What was that set called? I'm so into outsiders. I forgot about dynasty. So blessing of patience new card from dynasty um, And it's a card that can heal three but also block for three So that's very very good here, and that is what we're gonna use. We're gonna run one though So now we're gonna go into the D reacts here. Obviously, we're running the best D react and that's sink below And then we also run Oasis respite uh, The one resource means nothing because oftentimes what this deck will do is pitch a blue to use crown of seeds to use rampart the ram's head then we have one floating, so we can just Oasis Respite. So Oasis Respite really doesn't cost us anything more than like it would for other decks. Uh, Fate for Seen, another zero for four. We're running the three of that as well. We just are pretty D-React heavy. Now we get into some of our sideboard D-Reacts. That all you got, definitely for more of the aggro decks. Um, just allow us to draw a card so that we can always keep an arsenal because arsenal is the most important thing for this deck so that all you got allows for that um if they're coming with some weak attacks staunch response obviously for the bigger decks here um definitely one that we want to use for them now let's move on to uh, another kind of card that's not a d react per se but it is a one for four um again here you know pitching a blue every turn to do 
Crown of Seeds, Rampart, and then having the one extra to pay for this is really effective. Very, very efficient for Oldham. So we're running the three of Brothers in Arms. And now we're going to get into the portion of this deck that runs, let me grab the rest of it here, that runs blue, or blue pitch six powers. Uh, these are our poppers um, that will help us against Dromai, but obviously they all block for three. That's what we like. And we're not looking just to beat Dromai with these. We're looking at, at in some cases, we'll play them. We'll, we'll play these cards. So we got Mulch, we got Thunderquakes. These are just cards that block very well and um, can help with the end game. Macho Grande especially having to dominate. So uh, being able to pitch for blue and then help with the end game is what we desire out of these cards here. Um, also just effective blockers and poppers, right? So we got choke slams. That's good against Briar. If you if they are they played their um, channel mount heroic, then you force them to block there. Cranial crushes, just more six for eights. So that's kind of the theme here. Debilitate, just a decent card, you know. Uh, Disable has a good on hit effect to disrupt the arsenal. And now that we are done with that, let's get into why it's an Oldham deck, and that is because of the Ice cards and the um, Earth cards. Uh, Crown of Seeds and Ramp is like one of the biggest reasons why we're an Oldham deck. But now let's get into the cards that we will actually use. And so we got our Ice pitches here. We're mostly just using these cards to um, use Oldham's ability to Ice D react them so that they come in with one less card against us. Uh, that could save us up to, you know, like four damage. Um, so that's not bad at all. Channel Lake Frigid here. You know, we will we will play Channel Lake Frigid every now and then uh, just to keep the opponent uh, from having a big turn. Uh, but we really only want to play this card in our second cycle when a lot of uh, these uh, cards were already used to block with. So now we're getting mostly just ice cards and we can keep Channel Lake Frigid for around for at least two turns, which is, you know, obviously what we want. Uh, we got your honest touches, uh, block three, but earth pitches. Generally, try to, if with these earth cards, try to pitch them uh, along with the ice cards, try to pitch them more than block with them if possible, because you really want these to see these in the second rotation of the deck. Here we got a yellow strip uh, on touch. It is a popper, so it is good against Dromai or Iris of uh, Dromai. Uh, there's so many different Dromais now. Uh, but it also can be used if like, and for Oldham's ability. So if you have an ice, so if you have a yellow earth card and an ice card, you can pitch the yellow first and then the ice, and you will use Oldham's ability and have two resources flowing afterwards, but you're, you will most importantly prevent two damage with the earth pitch and have them put a card on top with the ice pitch. So it's a way that you can get, you know, the best of both worlds. And that's why we run yellow Autumn's touch so that we can achieve that. So we run three of those. And now let's get into one of the very few ways that we look to close out the game. Uh, so let's let's explain exactly what this deck does and why this card is important. This deck looks to gain life, looks to block very efficiently, and looks to just keep a high life total uh, to stabilize, right? Oldham is very, very good at blocking. And so, you know, when you are blocking with your big cards here, and then, uh, you know, surviving their big turns. Basically, you survive your opponent's first half of their deck, which is all their reds, all their big attacks. And so when they get to their second half of their deck, it's just blues. And at that point, you start pushing back. And one card you push back with is Oak and Old. Because again, we mostly look to pitch these cards for Oldham's ability, right? So we mostly look to Earth Pitch and Ice D React so that they will uh, keep... They'll keep being in the deck. They're not going to the graveyard since we are pitching them and they're continuing to be in deck. So that by the time we get our Oak and Olds, uh, we have the full fusion in hand already. A great way to do that if you get an Oak and Old early is just to put this in your arsenal, use Crown of Seeds, you'll tuck it back in your deck so you don't have to block with it or attack with it. So it's a great way to use the Oak and Olds. And we're running three because we want to close out the, the game with these guys. Okay, so that's Oak and Old. Now we're gonna get into um, another like Wincon-esque uh, type card, and that's Imperial Warhorn. 
Now this is a sideboard card. You're gonna only really bring this in against Dash and Icelander, but mostly Dash for sure. Because when you play Imperial Warhorn, um, you basically, you take one turn to play it and you take another turn to destroy it. And then you choose how many players you, you want. So mostly you just choose one and choose your opponent. And they have to sacrifice an item uh, or an aura. And so in Dash's case, this could mean, you know, you could take an adduction chamber away or a plasma purifier away. And that's really, really big because honestly, in order for Dash to beat you when you're running Rampire of the Ram's Head that blocks her pistol so efficiently, she needs basically all five equipment. So if you take away one or two items, you basically win that game. She cannot provide enough damage to you to beat you. Uh, same way with Icelander. Icelander, if Icelander sees that you're playing this style, she's going to set up Frost Texas. She's going to go for that big Insidious Chill turn, um, and or big uh, Ice Eternal turn. If you play Imperial Warhorns and you choose both players, you get to sacrifice a Frost Hex because that's technically under your control. So you get to destroy a Frost Hex and destroy an Insidious Chill. This card is very effective against Icelander as well. We only have one in the deck, and the reason is is because we are running Remembrances. Now, guys, I only have two. I need to get a third. I'm going to pick up a third one, uh, but I've just been running two, and I've been having success with it, but I definitely want a third one. But anyways, what we are using Remembrance to do in the case of Imperial Warhorn is we will play Imperial Warhorn, use it, and then Remembrance it back along with like some other cards. So Remembrance helps for our late game to be relevant, to be able to like help like push us over to win. And this is just such a little combo. Basically, when you have three remembrances, we get four Imperial Warhorns, which that's just too much. I mean, that's just sick. <laughs> uh, but same way for Okinos. If you found that you have to like block with an Okino early on or you, or you are attacking with them effectively, then you can still use Remembrance to grab them back and just to help get that game plan going again. It helps close out games. So Remembrance is actually one of the most important cards in this deck and you will almost always main board them. Um, the only time you won't is against aggro decks where this fatigue style is just gonna win on its own against them. Uh, but very, very big card Remembrance. Finally, we have Exposed to the Elements. We run plenty of Earth cards and plenty of Ice cards that this card we can get that double fusion on which is big to destroy a Storm Strider, um, a Ghostly Touch, uh, or even your opponent's Crown of Seeds if you're facing the mirror. So very, very big here. Um, and this is what we are looking to use um, against those matchups. So guys, I told you at the end here that I would help explain how to uh, really have the most success with this deck. and. Honestly, the deck is very, very powerful. It does this job very well. It knows exactly what it wants to do, and it does it super, super well because Oldham blocks so well. But your biggest opponent is time. I have a few suggestions for that. So first off, play some Talishar, play some Felt Table, play some you know over the countertop with your buddies, and get very familiar with the decks so that you're moving at a very efficient speed. Uh, the next up is approach your opponent on at like an event, like an armory, a calling, what have you. Um, and be very cordial. Be um, be an enjoyable person to play against because people tend to get very upset when playing against Fatigue. Um, it, they almost get more upset than like a combo deck or like a Kano even. And if you come off as a as an enjoyable person, then your opponent might not be so upset with you. My final last piece of advice, if your opponent is not having a good time and does not think they can win, there could be situations where your opponent decides to slow play you into making you draw. To avoid this, I have two suggestions. One, let them know early on, maybe after you played like Blessing of Patience, right? It's a pretty big tell to say, like, yeah, I'm the fatigue old. Let your opponent know, it's like, hey, so I'm, I'm not gonna really beat you through damage. I'm looking to fatigue you and outlast your deck. Um, so just a heads up there, I just want you to be aware of that. It lets them be aware of what you're doing and that you are aware what you're doing and it kind of uh creates this sense of um hey we're in the same boat here uh, instead of you know making each other enemies finally if your opponent just is not having it do not be afraid to call judge and i know that's easier said than done i know that that sh should help to 
create a more enjoyable experience. I encourage you guys, if you're an Oldham fan and you don't mind the fatigue uh, game plan, play this deck. It's actually a lot of fun. It's actually a lot of fun. Uh, but just, you know, just know there's a stigma to it. So if you as a person can break that stigma, then you're going to have a great time with this deck. And your opponent should have a good time too because basically your opponent's going to allow, you're going to allow them to play their whole deck. So, you know, whatever. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. This is the new Oldham deck uh, going through the bannings, uh, surviving. We'll make some more videos about maybe some of the other heroes that took hits and what their new decks will look like. But until then, keep on fabbing. See you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. If you like this shirt or the others we have just like it, we sell shirts and keychains and more to come. Go to fleshandbobbles.com. Enter the promo SNEEP and you can get 10% off your entire order. Some really cool stuff, some really cool gift ideas. We would really appreciate your help supporting us. Thank you.